your thoughts come from? Honestly, I mean, I want you to think about this. Let me, we're here in England, so, but I'm going to relate to something, uh, the American Super Bowl. I'm familiar with American football and the American Super Bowl. In this past year, I guess it's in February, was it, was so, in February? Yeah. it used to be January. People pay, companies pay to advertise at the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is one of the, one of the most watched events on television yes. in the United States. Well, in this past year, 30-second advertising spot. Mm -hmm. The cost of that was $5 million. 30 seconds. Just for the time, for 30 seconds. Not counting production. And companies spent millions of dollars more to produce the ads mm -hmm. that they spent the $5 million to show, to get into your head for 30 seconds. So you can say all you want. Well, I'm not affected by those that oh, those advertisements. Yes. Do you honestly think that these companies would spend millions and millions of dollars of their money, which is their great treasure, to get into your brain for 30 seconds if they didn't believe that it worked? And trust me, in the advertising industry, they have had behavioral psychologists on staff for a long, long time figuring out exactly what it takes to manipulate your mind. And that's the correct term. They're manipulating your mind. Satan comes to steal your love, your joy, your peace. He wants you to be focused on self-esteem rather than your value. Self. Jesus wants you focused on your value. We talked about this. What is your value? You were purchased with a price. God the Father paid Jesus Christ to redeem you. Self-esteem, who cares what you think of yourself? The only thing that matters is what God thinks of you. And if you've been convinced otherwise, you have been lied to, and you will never have that fullness of life. If you're buying clothes to be esteemed by your peers, so you think that they're like, they're not going to like you any better anyhow. Right? Jesus was not even impressed by Solomon's riches. Riches that he had that were a gift from God. He said, Behold, I have done according to your words. Behold, I have given you a wise and discerning heart, so that there has been no one like you before, nor shall one like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there will not be any among the kings like you all your days. That's right. But remember what it said back there when Jesus started there? I, I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. It was all about Solomon's glory. Right. You know what? If you're focused on your glory, you're going to miss out on God's glory. And if you miss out on God's glory, I promise you, you will miss out on the fullness of life. Right? So Jesus continues on, Matthew 6, 31. Do not be anxious then, saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? With what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things that Gentiles eagerly seek. For your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Since the Lord himself declared that these particular things are needs, then you can, should understand when Paul said what he said, and stand fast on this, yes. that God will supply all of your needs through his riches and glory. He doesn't supply your needs through the world's riches, mammon, but according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can't tell him how. So how much of your prayer life is about telling God what you want and how he should do it? Honestly, I mean, you know, it says let a man examine himself. Stop and think about it. When the Lord supplies our basic needs, then we shall be satisfied. For Paul wrote to Timothy again. I'm going to read 1 Timothy 6, 8. And he says, for if we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. And it is. It is content. If you got a pencil and paper, write this down. Not my words. Jesus said, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. The plan is, if you seek God, you seek his kingdom, you seek his righteousness, his promise to you is he'll take care of all the things that you need. That's the commentary. Do you remember the sermon? It started when we started on the Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Matthew 5, 6. God wants you satisfied. You'll never, have, you'll never get to that place 
where you don't have anxiety and concern and care in your life, and you don't believe that money is going to be the answer, that's what chokes the word of God in your life. That's why I read it, right? That chokes the word of God in your life. I don't want no diamond rings on Mercedes Benz. To carry up, it's one thing I want. Right till the end, that's why I want money. That's all I ever really want.